importance of, of doing this, this guitar, and, and it's really, it's not even like a guitar that's for me, it's not like fulfilling any, any like, I mean, obviously it's a lifelong dream for me, and it has been since day one to have something like this, but, but it's more for, for, I think, people who are looking to, to get into guitar and play, play in like, like, a, like a young rock band that, that like by no means am I like the, the best guitarist in the world, not even like, not even close. Like I, I make my way around, sure, but like I think that it's important for, for younger people to have this, this achievable goal of, of, of being, being in, a, in a young rock band and, and, and like achieving those goals with something that's, that's simple, you know what I mean? And, and this guitar is, it's relatively simple. It's, it's you know, it's based on the, on the Joan Jett um, the Joan Jett custom that she's had, which I started playing day one, day one that I, that I, that I like went into the Gibson offices and I was looking around and they had like a bunch of like Les Pauls and like super expensive guitars laying around. And I walked over to the, to the, the Joan Jett one that was, that was black and white and I walked over to it and I was like, what's this one? And they were like, oh, it's a Joan Jett custom. It's like 10 years old. Like it's, um, it's one that she made like a limited run of. And I was like, hmm. I'll take that one. And then since then, I basically have never played any other guitar. Was there one artist or riff that you saw that you said, yes, like that, I want to be that one day? I mean, a lot of it was like riff based for me, you know, like, like, I, like when I heard that riff, I was just like, holy shit. That is just, that's three chords basically. Right. And just like done in the most just such a like it is iconic, iconic iconic part that doesn't necessarily have to be like you know like I'm not playing the solo from Stairway to Heaven or whatever you know which is L legally, iconic in legally you're not allowed to here legally I don't think I'm allowed to here I think that's been banned from places like this no stairway denied I can't even imagine how hard that riff was to think of and it's like one in a million that you'd write a riff like American Idiot you know what I mean but it's so simple that I bet he wrote it in like 30 seconds and he's like, that's it. And it's just like, when you have those sparks of genius, then that's, that becomes, it doesn't necessarily have to be so complicated. You know, our song, Youngblood, is, is kind of this, like, you wouldn't necessarily hear it and be like, that's a purely guitar song because of the chorus is running through this, like, it's got this like Correct. stomping, like beat that that is combined with this like synth layer, but but like the basis of the song is around this like guitar riff, and then in the chorus it's this. You know, which is like usually you wouldn't necessarily hear if, if you weren't if you weren't actually paying attention for it. And, like my favorite chord progressions and like my chord shapes. Um, are just like fifth chords, like, and we use it like all the time in our music, and like all like like it's probably the shape that we use most in our in our stuff. And I think that when we when we wrote Jet Black Heart, it was when we were um, using when, when we actually started using it properly, and we add like the D there, so it's like this open, and it's just it's just this simple this simple thing that like drums. And it's literally just that. But I think that there's something magical about about the way that it kind of like these chords kind of take you to this like like kind of place and have so much room for extra like dynamic around. And adding, it, the, adding the extra um, fingerings there, add another layer of yeah, exactly. feeling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now you know, looking at the wall up here, we got you know some legends like you know Slash and Frampton and yeah. uh, Morello and. Uh, you mentioned Billy Joe, obviously Angus Young. Like, was there any riffs from those guys or Tony Iommi where you're like, God, the damn, I wish I wrote that riff? Um, oh God, I mean, American Idiot, um, or some other ones. I mean, I don't know how many of those riffs I'm allowed to play here. I feel like they're all banned. <laughs> all the ones I want to play. You're allowed. <laughs> First day I got the guitar, 
And I was like, I'm going to learn how to do this. And I took a lesson, and my the whoever was teaching me was like, all right, so you're going to play, <laughs> literally, he told me to play this. <laughs> and I was like, I can't do it. I sat there for like an hour. I was like. And then I was like, I'm going to quit. And the first day I, I started playing, I was like, I'm, qu I'm quitting. And I remember I was sitting on my floor, and I was trying to play it, and I was like, I quit. That's it. I put the guitar down. My dad was like, Michael, you can't, you can't just like right. quit. You've been playing for one day, and you're not even going to see this through. And so you know, he managed to help me somehow convince me to keep playing. And then, and then um, I feel like you hit this, you kind of, when you've been playing for maybe like a year or, or like maybe like a year and a half, you have this moment where you like, it clicks. You know what I mean? And like, I know that people say that a lot and I'm like, oh, that's bullshit. But there was this actual moment. I remember I was playing this wrong, this song called I Was Wrong by Social Distortion. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you know that song. Oh, yeah. But I was, I was playing it and then at the end of the song, I was like, holy crap. I was like, I get it. I understand, I understand the shapes. I understand like the, like the, the chords and, and, and I understand like kind of the, the music theory of it.